I'm Stan Lubin, and I enjoy carving fish, turtles, uh, totem poles, and you know a few other things. And I'd like to sh just kind of show you and tell you on some of the tools that I have found to be quite helpful in my uh, years of carving. And I've probably been carving for, I don't know, 12, 15 years now. But uh, one of the things uh, I found it very necessary is to always wear ear protection when you're running your your uh, dust collector or any of your machines, wear, wear ear protection. It's very important because uh, your ears will, as we get older, you know, will go bad. Uh, the other thing is I found that wearing a mask really helps your lungs. You'd be surprised how much dust collects on your lungs. And even if you're painting, I, I never used to wear anything when I would, would spray brush with, with the air gun. And uh, I started wearing a mask, and I found that my mask really picked up a lot of color. So you do pick up an awful lot of, of, uh, of paint in your lungs if you don't wear a mask. I also, when I, when I do rough grinding, I always wear a glove, a leather glove on my left hand. You can see this one's got uh, quite a few marks, you know, where it's been, been bit by, uh, by one of these but my fingers stay intact. So I would recommend always wearing a glove anytime you're rough grinding. Now sanding, I don't wear a glove. It just kind of gets in the way. And my fingernails show it because uh, fingernails are always getting hit with that, that sandpaper and man, it eats them quick. Uh, getting into the tools, we all have a lot of tools and these are some of the tools that come with with different, different little machines, little rotary grinders that I've got. And um, all of these are, are very nice. They have a lot of little different things in them. Uh, I used to sand with these little sanders uh, a lot. You know, they go on there and you tighten down the screw. But uh, I found I don't really use those a whole lot anymore. I, I do use some of these round things like, th well, not this one, but but uh, that are in here. Whoa, this is, a, this is not a, a disc, this is a, some kind of a polish. But uh, there, the disc like this, I, I found very useful for a lot of things. I thought it was in, in the kit, but, it's, but it's, I guess it's in this kit. But these kits right here have been sitting on the shelf for probably 10 or 12 years and uh, you can't imagine how much dust I had to wipe off from these, you know, when I picked them up, just because I don't use them really a whole lot anymore. But they're useful every now and then for, for you know, some little thing. You, you'll run across something, you say, man, I know I got a tool just for that. And quite often you find them in, in these kits. One thing that I, I found is, is quite useful is is these little diamond things. Used to buy these at Harbor Freight for three bucks. And I don't know what they are now, but I'm, I know they're not three bucks anymore. But they really have a lot of useful little bits. And anytime you want to, you know, do something that doesn't require taking off a lot of wood, these little bits work out good. Now here's one that's a quarter, quarter, <coughs> excuse me, a quarter inch shaft, and it has different things. But, uh, as you can see, they're all in there yet, which means I'm not using them. Now this one right here is a rough diamond, and there's a few of them missing out of that, and I do use some out of that. But these are very handy to have. Uh, every so often you'll go to these and, and use those. Those will fit into a Dremel, they will fit into a rotary tool. Most of those have an eighth inch uh, shaft. Uh, a couple of them, they had quarter inch, and, and that will go for the Weecher a quarter inch. <clears throat> uh, getting into uh, uh, the Weecher, how many use tools like this? Quite a few. Every so often, these things will start getting rough. The, the shaft on these will start getting, getting rough. Have you ha ever had that? Ever have these things break on you? Yeah, so you gotta replace them. If these start getting rough, pull this apart. This comes right off. 
but uh, right there is your inside part and if it gets gets running a little rough get yourself go down to the car place and get yourself some grease and uh, and put a little bit on your fingers and just kind of rub that up and down that man will that be smooth after that it'll, it'll run so nice after that but it, I find that you got to do that every so often. Now to put this together, usually you got to pop the hand piece off. Then, then you can put this together and then you can turn this on and then you can pop, pop this thing in. And that's kind of the procedure to use to, uh, put, to putting that together. If you leave this on, then it doesn't work it near as well. I like to use, use the Black & Decker. Unfortunately, they don't make these anymore. And so uh, you're going to have to come up with a different solution. Uh, I use also these here. I believe Master Mechanic, and I believe these come from, from uh, Menards. And sometimes you can find these for about 20 bucks a piece. So uh, we're down to whatever you have plus these. I know some people use the ones with the shaft or, or those little micros like Bill used last week and those are nice. Uh, I kind of got away from the shaft uh, thing because I went through so many of them. So now I keep one of these with this little tool in it and this is simply a little diamond but it seems to be quite sharp and it is very good for doing uh, fins like this and you, you just go across it like this on fins and, and, it, and it really works very well and I brought a, a bigger fin here and I made a, a 38 inch pike and that would and this is one like goes on a 38 inch pike but you can see and you, and you just come across it and, and work that. I usually don't put, put the, uh, the bigger grooves in it because I'm kind of the opinion that it doesn't have to be right, it has to look right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't, uh, really don't know what a proper fin looks like. Now if you're going to do it for competition, uh, then you know what I say doesn't go. But I, I make these like this, and people will look at that and they'll say, yeah, that looks right. But I do have a couple dark, you know, bigger grooves than this one. <clears throat> but uh, on smaller fins, I, I don't put the bigger grooves in. I think it looks, looks good. This is the tools that I usually use. And in all my carving, uh, this, this is the ones that I use, and, and I use, on the Weecher, I use the big uh, thing for grinding down, you know, taking a lot, of, a lot of wood off. And you can use either style of this. They both work very good. Uh, this one right here, I f found that it has almost wore all the, the, uh, the little things, on, bumps on that, so it doesn't grind as much off anymore than is what it used to. And I found it, it grinds down, you know, it wore out fairly fast. This one right here has got a lot of wear left in it. For sanding, I like to use the split mandrel. And I have uh, a three-quarter inch and I have, I think this is probably a half or five-eighths. And they both work very good. And then I have a quarter inch. And the, if you don't have a quarter inch mandrel like this, uh, I'd get one because in smaller areas this really works nice. But if you want to to do it another way to sand, there's these these carbide burrs, and these carbide burrs come from uh, Keldon Company, which is right down the road a couple miles, and they. Uh, I, I would, when I was taking lessons on carving, they told us, told us about this and, and showed us how to use them and everything, but I kind of got away from them. Now I'm really getting back to them again. And there's a double cut and a single cut. 
and I like using a single cut. And I, I use the single cut, you know, in, in here and on, on fish uh, like in behind, in behind here. If I wanted a, a quarter inch, I'll use this, or if I wanted smaller, I will use something like this, which is only an eighth inch. And that, that's a carbide burr, and it, it's from this again. And uh, I just bought an eighth inch, a little bit different than this, and it was only five bucks. But when you use these, they, they leave the wood really smooth. It's almost like sanding. If you want to do it on the ta tail in, in this area here, you can, <clears throat> you can use this, and it will almost be like it's sanded. You can touch it up just a little bit with sandpaper, but, but they really work nice. Uh, another good thing to have is, is, a, is a set of diamond, and this has, I don't know, 50 or more, I guess, in it. And I bought this from Harbor Freight one time. And uh, you have to go to, to a little bit bigger Harbor Freight store than is in Holland. But uh, if you can find one of these, this is really handy because it has all the shapes that you need. And I find that I go to this quite often, speci especially the round ones and uh, you know, a lot of different, different ones here. But if you can find, you probably find these online now. I think I bought it before you found them online. But this is a this is very good useful set to have. Uh, sandpaper. I use a, a 150 sandpaper, and and I buy it in rolls like this. And there's a, a guy in Grand Haven that's an abrasive uh, company, and it's uh, and I I can't even tell you how to find it. I I just kind of know where to, where to find him. But it's a little one-man shop, and if you can find an abrasive uh, place like that, this sandpaper is kind of the cutoffs of what they use in making, uh, you know, the belt, you know, the belts for for sanders, and that's what that guy does all the time is just stand there and makes belts of various lengths and and everything. But he has a whole stack of these things, and so you can find these usually, you know, really reasonable, and and this this like this. It's, uh, it works very good in, in this split mandrels. And uh, I use a 150, but I have some 120 and 180. So if you want to grind down something a little quicker and you don't want to use this or you want a, a bigger surface, put a 120 on, you'd be surprised how much wood you can remove with, with a 120. I mean, it, it really will take it off. Here's some little butterfly fish. Now, good thing place to start out is vellum paper. Go down to an office supply place and get vellum paper. And that is very good. You can take and, and put that in a book. Like this right here, and this is a little butterfly fish like that. And what I did is just take a piece of vellum paper, lay it on there, trace around it, cut it out. But the, the vellum paper, you can take in a pencil and put these markings on it. And then, you know, put that down on the thing and, and go around it on the opposite side. And it'll, it'll just like, it'll transfer that line right onto your wood. But vellum paper is, is very good. I use that a lot. But you, you just, you know, put your pencil mark on the opposite side and then you put it down and go over that and it'll transfer that right to the wood. But this, uh, it shows here a lot of butterfly fish and, uh, you know, like this one and this one, you know, these different butterfly fish. And that, that is the book of uh, Fish of the World. And that's, that's a really good book to have. It, uh, the, it, on the cover, it says $70, and I think I paid, uh, I don't know, 10 or 20 for it on the used book market. But a uh, lot, of, lot of fish in there that are really fun to make. I've, I've made quite a few fish out of this, and uh, 
the, the key is that if you can paint, uh, you'll have a lot of fun doing that. Uh, this book here is 75 wild freshwater tropical fish. And I've got it open to this page right here because this is one that I made. And that is, that's that fish. And just from that picture, you can make, make a fish out of it. You need nothing more than that picture. And you can paint it, you can carve it, you can look at that picture and you can tell how thick it is. You know, you can tell an awful lot about it. The size of the fins, you know, paint colors, everything. And the secret is, these are paintings of fish. These aren't, these aren't actual photographs of fish. Now, if this was a photograph, it would be much harder to do. You look at this, and somebody has already figured out the, the uh, color combination on it. So it's, pretty, it's, it's, it's easier to match up that color combination than, uh, than if it were a photograph. So if you're looking for, for pictures to try to, you know, of the fish you want to do, it, it helps if it's, a, it's a, like this. And the butterfly fish, these are some of the butterfly fish were in that other book. But on, on getting back to carving now, what tools we use, this This is a little uh, carbide bit again. It's an eighth inch shaft, it's an eight inch head, and it's kind of flame, uh, flame shape to it. And you can get in there real nice with something like this. Maybe I got most of these done, but anyway, You can, you, you can get in there like this and really, uh, really make that work good. You get in there like that, you come down across over here, you can smooth that out. And with these, these carbide bits, they really are nice and smooth. And you could use something like this to run across over here to, uh, run that across there to, to, to give it a sharper edge, or if you want to give it a, a nice sharp edge, what you use is this carbide bit. And this is from this same, same company. And I think these are probably, I don't know, eight or nine dollars now in, in the quarter inch size. But you can come across that like this, and you can make that a really sh nice sharp thing, plus it'll be smooth. And then you can come back on this side and, and hit it on this side, and if you're very careful and don't get too deep, you can, you can make that a nice sharp edge. But this tool with a, with a sharp edge like that is really the, the key to it, and that's become one of my favorite things. The other thing, I don't know how you'd feel about making faces, but the, the uh, doing the face on a, on a fish used to be one of the hardest things that, that I had. On, on a face on a fish now is with these, these bits like this really come in, you know, make it very easy because I can take and do the, do the gill cover on it. And then for the gills, you kind of come around like this and then you can come across and you see you got that all done already. And you take a little bit of sandpaper on that. If you take this right, right here and use that to, to, to uh, sand that down a little bit, you, you got the gills already done. For the mouth, it used to be pretty hard to get a good looking mouth on, on a fish also. But if you come in, and th these are one sided fish. But the mouth, you just kind of come in. So I got the mouth started, and you make that a little bit deeper, and then you go in there with this this uh, quarter inch rough diamond, and you go in there and, and kind of undercut that whole thing, and you have a nice looking mouth. 
and it's, it's really easy to do that. Yep. Uh, to do the eyes, take and, take and go down to the Hobby Lobby or Joanne Fabrics or some of these stores and buy these half beads like this. And you can find them in different sizes. Now this one is, is quite a big one for quite a big fish. And the, the bigger they are, the more fun they are to paint. But what you do is you take your black and you paint on the back, back side and, and you paint your pupil in that. And don't make it too big because it exaggerates on the other side. But paint that black pupil on there. Dry it. Get one of your wife's old hair dryers and keep that in your carving stuff there. And, and I have one and use it all the time. I'll take and dry that black. And then I'll go in there with the gold and go around that and just kind of daub that around it like this and then put maybe some color to it. Depends upon the kind of fish. Like on that red one right there, I would probably take some red and kind of just daub in there also so it's got gold and red. And if you're going to do a bluegill, I would use gold and green. But just daub that on there, dry it. You got a, you got a nice looking eye. And you, if, if you have a catalog like from Wesco, you can see what the shape of some of the pupils are on the eyes. And uh, some of them are kind of pointy, some of them are round, some of them are, you know, little different shapes. But you can look at that and you can paint that pupil on there and uh, these cost about a penny a piece, two cents a piece and you can make your eye and it take, won't take you five minutes to make them. You know, you can make half a dozen of them in ten minutes and, uh, and they're nice looking eyes. I set those in there using uh, quick wood. Take, take a little bit of quick wood, mix it up, put it in there, push the eye in, put it on something, something solid. And, and push it down good so that it's in there good and, and take and clean it up with a little tool and uh, you got your eye in there. And if you do the eyes this way, that eyeball will always look at you. No matter which way you turn this, that eyeball will always look at you. And on the fins, I like to do two th one of two things. I like to put them in this way if it's a smaller fish and I will use, use this tool it's just a little, uh, it's, it's a coarse, but it's not as coarse as this one, other one is. It's not as coarse as this one. But I put that in there and, and just go in there and, you know, draw that back like this. And then try to r round the edges a little bit and then go in there with some sandpaper and, and do it that way. Or I will take and make fins like this. Use hawthorns and put the fins in like that. And then you simply use a drill. And I like to use one of these, these drills that are uh, made for cutting. Would, would you, uh, rotozip. rotozip. Yeah, these are rotozip tools. And they, they cut in the, in the fish much easier than a regular. Just put the holes in there, you know, do your fins and you know, do the whole thing on there with the tissue paper and the glue and water. The other thing is, when you go to paint your fish, you want to you want to take a a dowel and run a screw into it like this. Cut the head off and take and put a pair of pliers on it or channel locks or something and, and jam it down in there good, maybe with some glue. And then you just make a little hole in the bottom of your fish, turn that in. So now you can you can paint your fish. You know, you don't have to hold it by the tail or anything else. You know, you got him. Little fish, or sometimes when you're cutting fish out, if you're cutting out of a block of wood this thick and you want your fish to be three-eighths of an inch, you wind up with something like this. Make little fishes out of them. Just do the, do the normal thing. Make a little fish, poke a hole in it, put a... Uh, put a wire on there like your Christmas ornament and you got a Christmas ornament. Uh, wood burning, I have a, a detail master and you can get all different ends for it for scales and I have these, these size scales and it 
works for almost any fish. So I, I've made, you know, and, and this is size C, D, E, and F. I use a lot of super glue when I'm making little fish like this. Sometimes you'll get the fins a little too, th too thin or you get them where it's got a bad spot in it. F the fin will fly off. What do you do? Do you throw it away or how do you fix that? Well, quite often I'll find that fin and I'll pick up the, you know, put it on there and it fits pretty good. So I'll use a little bit of this uh, super glue and I like the gel. Uh, I'll use whatever I can get, but uh, sometimes you can get the gel and that works a little better for doing, doing putting fish, to, putting fins together. But once, once you put that on there, use a little bit of extreme power. That's an accelerator and you take and you take a, a, that's a, paintbrush, a, a tool and just dip in there and just touch it to that and that accelerator will just go, you know, run all over. It's really thin stuff, but your glue will harden just bang that quick and all of a sudden your glue is hard and so you don't have to sit there and hold it. Uh, the other thing is it, once you get your, your fins made and you want to kind of clean all that rough stuff off, use these scrubby pads. Cut those in about two inches square and put them on this little tool here. It's just a screw running into a shaft and you always want to have it so that the, it's turning this way. So you always want to turn it so it goes off. If you turn, do it, use it this way, it'll grab and your fish will go flying. <clears throat> and we've all done that. So use it like this, but clean up all those areas, clean up the head, uh, just don't have the eyes in yet because that'll, that'll take the shine right off the eye. But uh, you know, hit the eye and the gills and like that, then clean that up. Works really, you know, very good efficiently for that. Um, and for cleaning your tools, any, any of these tools, uh, like these burrs, when they get, get stuff in them or, or these or, or even this right here, I like to take a little bit of acetone, just take a little, little thing like that, pour some acetone in there, put that in there and almost immediately you can take that out and you can clean it with, a, with either a brass, brass brush or a steel brush like this. And you can take that stuff right out. You notice how clean that is. You know, it just took a couple, didn't take 30 seconds and I had them all clean but that just eats that stuff right out of there. And you know, some, some woods will just really glom into that, especially if you're using a pine or something. Thank you. Thank you.